Many of you have received visions. You have had dreams. Some of you, you have read scriptures. And you will dream and wake up and say, what is happening here? Because the dream you are seeing, you don't understand. So you are asking God the meaning of what you have seen. Sometimes the vision is not correlating with whatever you know. I know you have received, you know, visions from God, dreams from God, audible voices. Some of you, it has tended. I had a guy who came to me and said he was in his room and he had a very serious tender. And that tender could have even break the room into pieces. And he don't understand. So you will discover that people are seeing things. Every day people have access to the channels of God's communication. People are able to hear God and people are able to have access to God's communication channels every day. So the problem here is that their ability to interpret it is the problem. You can receive it and yet you don't know what it means. And until you know what it means, we don't call it a revelation. It becomes a revelation when that which you have received, you have understanding to it. So I told you that the human spirit is divided into three. We have the conscience, we have the intuition, and we have the communion. And we have dealt with the conscience. We also dealt with the intuition. And we dealt with the communion. So I'm assuming you know all these things. It's, I said I'm assuming. It's an assumption. Though I know you have forgotten. But I'm assuming you know all of them. So there is a part of the intuition of a man. That gives man revelation. So there is a part of your intuition that receives revelations from the Lord. It receives revelation from the Spirit of God. Now, it comes quietly to your spirit, yet you have an understanding to it. That is why you will be studying the scripture and all of a sudden you will have revelation about something. The Holy Ghost is communicating that to you. And then I want you to understand that revelation is not given based on your level of IQ. It is not given based on how you can reason. There are many prophets says who don't have revelations there are many people with certificates here yeah, they lack revelation and when we say the revelation here which means it has you your intuition the intuition part of your spirit have received whatever the lord is communicating and as it receive it, it it is understood in your realms so god communicated quietly to your spirit in a way that you can understand whatever the lord is saying at that time and that is what we call a revelation that is why there are many people who are professors yet they are not born again because whatever that was communicated it's not that they have not heard the word of god it's not that preachers have not been sent to them they have received different types of evangelists those who are at the roadside every day there's no average man in the world who said he has not heard the voice of god it's just that the voice that he heard was not able to give him light so which means he heard the voice but he didn't have revelation so professors are those who study the bible and there are many people they study the bible and we call them religious teachers they are at the school they teach religion and they are against that jesus was is a son of god they try to prove that jesus was not dead it was an exchange of somebody to another person which means they have read the bible but they have not been given revelation to understand it because it is impossible to understand the scripture with that revelation it takes the spirit of god to show you whatever the spirit of god is saying because because whatever is written in your Bible is purely spiritual. A carnal man don't understand it. So the Bible says the things of God are spiritual. They are spiritual descent. And then a man who is carnal will never and ever understand it. That is why when you are speaking in tongues, there is an unbeliever who is looking at you like there's something wrong with you. So you are busy building up your spirit. And then there, there is an unbeliever somewhere that thinks that you are doing rada da 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 It is not rada da da You know, the person need to have that spirit of revelation to understand what is happening to you. So there are some Sometimes when you wake up every night and you are praying, some people may think that you have issues. Have you ever met those people who think you are praying because you are having problems and your issues are bigger? No, it's not just about issue. It's different revelation. What I've come to you is different from what I've come to that person. So two born again Christians can even sit in one chair, yet your approach to the things of God are different. It depends on the level of insight you are getting through your intuition and that person too. So when we say somebody is spiritual dead, the person can be in church and yet that person is spiritual dead. You can be in church and yet you are spiritual dead, which means that part of your intuition is, is not active. It is not strong. It is not able to receive revelations from the Lord. It has 
no ability and capacity to receive information from the Lord and then maintain them and understand them and decipher them. I know some of you know sleep paralysis. People will sleep and then spirits will sit on there and they are not able to sit. You want to even mention the name of Jesus, you can't mention the name of Jesus. You want to scream, you cannot scream. You want to cry, you cannot cry. What happened? There is a spirit that has taken over you. So people like that, it's a sign that their intuition is not active. Because one thing about the intuition is that when your intuition is active, the Holy Ghost gives you promptings. The Holy Ghost prompts you of impending dangers. Even when you are sleeping and then any spirit is about to press you, the Holy Ghost will tell you that you are about to be pressed. And you wake up all of a sudden. You don't know what have waked you up. You are just up. Which means the Holy Ghost prompted you. But you know, when you are being dominated by your body, when the Holy Ghost is prompting you, you don't know. Because that part of you has been cut off. You have been dominated by your body. And as you are dominated by your body, spirits will come and even shit on you. You don't know. So some people will sleep and wake up and they are having marks all over their body. They have been dominated by their body to understand that there was a war in the realm of the spirit between their spirit and other spirits. And that war was even having an ability to have physical impact on their body, yet they were not able to wake up. So you see people say, eh, I slept and I wake up and then there is marks all over my face. Yes, you have been dominated by your body. You need to sit up. You are spiritually dead. And when we say spiritually dead, we don't mean that your spirit is dead. We mean that that part of your spirit that receives promptings from the Holy Ghost is not active. It is dormant. And that is what some of you need to activate. You will sleep and sleep and sleep. You have never had Look, the one thing about the Holy Ghost is that even when you are dead asleep and there is about to be a trouble, the Holy Ghost will wake you up. Get up. You get up. That, just start speaking. Start praying. So a spiritual man knows that whenever you wake up in the middle of the night and it is not normal, maybe the time you have been waking up, that one and you just wake up in a particular time, Holy Ghost have prompted you. Like I told you the other time, Holy Ghost don't rest. You are the one who needs rest. It's your body that didn't rest. In the realm of the spirits, the spirit of God don't know what is called rest. That is why when you are sleeping, Holy Ghost is in another place person and Holy Ghost is using that person whilst you are tired and you are sleeping there is another body somewhere prophesying whilst you are tired and you say you are sleeping Holy Ghost is in another person performing miracles raising the dead opening eyes of the blind whilst Kenneth Hedgin is dying the Holy Ghost is raising another prophet whilst Benny Hinn and all of them are tired and they are about to go Holy Ghost is raising men into the healing ministry Kenneth Copeland all of them there is a, there is going to be substitute and it is not a new Holy Ghost it's the same Holy Ghost because in his realms there is nothing like time Holy Ghost don't open operate in time. He operates outside of time. So he operates in eternity. And in that realms, you don't get tired. So in that realms, you can be working and be working. That is why an angel can be sent to guide over a family for thousand years and that angel will still be there. The angel can be standing there for over thousand years. So a prophet eyes can open and the prophet will say, for thousand years now, there is an angel standing in your house. Don't think that the prophet is over exaggerating. No. He is not exaggerating. It is true. Because angels are not moved. They are not affected by time. You are the one who is affected by time, by seasons. As time comes and goes, you are changing in age. Your body is changing. Your, your hormones are changing. Everything about you is changing. But in the realm of the spirit, everything called spiritual is not affected by time. So that is why you cannot operate in the physical if you don't have a body. Before you can be on earth, you need a body. Because on earth, Times affect men. So do hey, what's the sunshine? Some of us say, eh, what can come, can come. That's where you are, where you are. What can come, don't come. It is what will make come, that comes. So there is a part of you revelation in your intuition. There is that part of you that must be activated for you to begin to receive promptings from the Holy Ghost. Some of you, you are so dead that you, you don't know the last time you have a prompting from Holy Ghost. You have to enter into the wilderness and come out again because it's like you are not prepared. You are just trying your luck and it is dangerous. The Holy Ghost will be able to prompt you you this one you are about to do is dangerous on Wednesday night I had a dream and in the dream I saw like uh, my money got missing plenty money it got missing <laughs> and I wake up when I wake up a, a, a colleague pastor of mine so he called me I said prophet David I said yes I have a nice deal for you I said okay sir he said there's a car that car you cannot get it in the market at 350,000 that's 3.5 billion and then this this guy is selling it 95,000 profit Please, 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 let's buy this car. Let's buy this car. <laughs> but he never know that me, I have already had a dream. He never know that I had a vision already. When he just said that, Holy Ghost just prompted on me. My heart just beat. This is the deal. Now you lost the money. And I said, sir, hmm, I'm not cutting you short. But until we see the car, we are not buying. So he told the guys that um, 
the money is ready. We just wanted to trick them and see. So they should bring the car and then collect the money. And they said that we should pay and collect the car in five days' time. Are we children? <laughs> Why should I pay for a car and wait five days' time? And they say, eh, it's a government seize cars those cars government seized so we need to pay and they will take the money and go to the government and collect the chief and come and do what and clear it for us and give us the car and blah 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 i said my brother me i don't believe them i know i know in my spirit that this something like this will come so no mm -mm. I know they do, I know they do. Promptings. If you're a man of God and you don't have promptings, a believer, and you don't have promptings, you'll be doing things by heart. The Holy Ghost have prompted a lot of people, yet they will not listen. And like I said the last time, 99% of Christians hear the voice of God every day. There's no one here who can say he don't hear God. It's just that we have a way of silencing the voice of God to understand God has God have stopped speaking. You have silenced him to a time he said, let me keep quiet. You have silenced him. Christians have a way of silencing God that when they silence him, even God cannot help himself. He will speak, they will ignore. He will talk, ignore. He will talk, ignore. To understand that he has stopped talking. Some people come and say, eh, prophet, I used to see dreams and now I don't see again. Say, well, it depends on what you do. I used to see open visions. Now I don't see anything. It depends on what you did. Whatever you did is what stopped you from seeing. So the type of revelation I'm talking about, it comes to your intuition. And when it comes to your intuition, your mind will now help you. So remember that you can use your reasoning to understand or hear God. You can use your thinking to understand and hear God. That is your solical faculties. They are not used in understanding or hearing God. It is not possible to understand or hear God from your solical realms. So your reasoning your mind how you think there are people they think their thinking is very sharp when they think for you you think that you, you don't have thinking brain but yet they don't believe that god is alive so you have to understand that they are using their mind to think but for you to understand spiritual things the spirit of god needs to communicate to your spirit through your intuition and as he communicates your spirit through your intuition you receive it quietly it becomes a revelation and as it comes it transforms and changes you so that is when we call it a revelation Listen. So you have to train yourself in a way that that part of your spirit will be ready to receive promptings from the Holy Ghost all the time. If you don't train it well, you are likely to be disadvantaged in this area. Because some of the things you need as a born again believer is the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Now the problem of the church today is that somebody has misled the church and whoever who has misled the church have done a greater harm to the church there is a prophet who have misled the church to an error and whoever started it didn't try it is hard bringing them back on track because the prophets have told other people that if you want to be accepted and be celebrated then you must learn how to hear the voice of god audibly and to hear the voice of god to see visions open vision clear cut vision you know inner vision very sharp prophet prophetic sharpshooter major one Prophesy. They have killed the church. Young Cho, with the prompting of the Holy Ghost, was having a church of one million population. With the prompting, just prompting. And when you are reading the books of Young Cho, he said, and the Lord told me, and the Lord told me. Sometimes I say, how do this man hear that we don't hear them prophesying from the altar? David Oedipo said, and the Holy Ghost told me audibly. But you never heard them prophesy. Mensa Otterbell will say, and the Spirit told me. Ah. Which spirit is talking to these people that we don't know? Because when you hear them and uh, hear me, there is difference. The way I prophesy and the way they claim they hear God is different. But it's not just about the claims, it's about the results. So look at Young Bicho, look at Adipo, yeah, who has never shouted on a demon. Yet, he's the one with the current largest church in Africa now. Yet, when he's teaching, he teaches simple. So you need to understand that there is a prophet that led the prophetic into an error. Thinking that you hear from God, it must be spectacular. So everyone follow him to an error. So everyone is at the mountain, I must hear God, I must hear God. God is busy communicating to them, using even their brother, and they say, we must hear you. And God will say, how do you want to hear me when I am communicating with you? You refuse to hear. The small promptings, they are voices. They are voices. It is the Holy Ghost speaking to you. He will prompt you. Promptings, they are promptings. He's reminding you. Some of them, he's reminding you of things. That is Holy Ghost speaking. You want the Lord to speak to you the same way he met, the, the, the same method he used to meet Paul on his way to Damascus in Acts 9. You want, as you are going the Lord will meet you and you'll fall down and be shaken. And you hear, my son Joshua, I am the Lord God Almighty, the Lord who was with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <laughs>
I was also with Jesus. And I'm the God who came and died and arose the third day. I am with you. <laughs> From today onwards, whatever you do is blessed. And you now came back and said, Raka. I heard the Lord spoke to me audibly yesterday, an audible voice of God. <laughs> Abba! <laughs> no, it's not happening that way. Oh. You will hear it that way. Oh. You will wait until Jesus returns. The only spectacular encounter you hear is when the trumpet sound for rapture. Pom, 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 pom. You say, yes, my ears are open. No, they didn't open. It's rapture. <laughs> We are about to be raptured. We are going. We are meeting Jesus gloriously at the sky. Amik Anoza Igaradiada. Young men have been misled. Oh, ah, go to Achua Mountain. Sit down. Climb Achua Mountains. The day I went there, I saw desperate men trying to be used by God. Vampire, vampire. Desperately, I trying to access the voice of God in the wrong. Way. And thank God, since I started this prophetic series, thank God uh, they see me prophesy sometimes. They would have said, I'm jealous. You know, anytime a pastor wants to correct this error, they will say that the pastor is jealous. Anytime a teacher wants to talk, they will say that the teacher don't like the prophetic office. But the truth is that what you are doing is not right. You know, some people want to make it like, you know, when you see a prophet now, you know, God has to school some of you, most of you, to some spiritual things. They will never tell you that hearing God is as simple as A, B, C, D. They will tell you that. Hey, hearing God is not easy. Before I started hearing the voice of God, I fasted for two years. It's not true. The most expensive commodity in the realm of the spirit is salvation. If you don't need to fast to be saved, you don't need to fast to see. You need light to see. That's all. You need that light to be born again. <laughs> yeah. If somebody say, what is the most expensive commodity in the realm of the spirit? Please, sir. It's salvation. It was the only thing Jesus died for. He has to pay with the blood. Before Jesus came, Elijah was seeing. Even Elisha, by touching the eyes of the servant, the eyes opened. He saw angels. Prophets were doing impartation. Obadiah was a prophet as a result of hiding prophets. African ministry was preaching and that's it. If not evangelist. Those days, if you're an evangelist, people respect you. Ah, have you met the evangelists those days? Those with bougie hair. When you meet them, say evangelist, evangelist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amen. The 21st century, you only grew to meet the prophets. But those days, whenever you are an evangelist, there are two girls for you, for being an evangelist. Yeah, these days when you are an evangelist, no girl is ready because no one wants to follow you to the bush. But those days, evangelists were the most celebrated office in the fivefold ministry. So whenever you say you are an evangelist of God, you have hard points already. Oh, Jesus is the Lord. Things are changing, you know, and it came to the time of the prophetic and... The prophetic revival took over and it appears like evangelists were not seen as people again you know wherever you go i'm a prophet of god to understand the prophets were more than the pastors there will be an error if prophets are more than teachers it's supposed to be two teachers per one prophet in the new testament the bible says in the in a certain church they were um, teachers and prophets certain teachers and prophets in those days during the days of the apostles when you see them traveling they travel with one prophet yet many teachers and apostles of the word because the prophets was were there to give them directions and to tell them what will happen later not you your name is Amma. you are from here you are from this no those days that type of revival wasn't in display so whenever the prophet want to go astray the duty of the prophet was not to teach you must keep quiet you prophesy and the teachers judge that was it you must prophesy and they will judge this is when a prophet prophesy a teacher will not is not allowed to judge because the prophet is an overseer he's a general overseer whatever he say is final that is why a prophet can say poo poo and bring your poo poo so that as you eat your poo poo you will do well You fed them in a bottle and you are coming to church with poo-poo in your pocket. We are marching. <laughs> Come, prophet will say, it's time for spiritual direction. You say, amen. You remove poo-poo. Eat them. You have eaten. Can't you see people chewing grass on social media? People are using snake and they are kissing the snake. You kiss the snake for your miracle. Claim a shoe. For a testimony, I was watching Imanua Nimana. God, thank you for opening my eyes before I die. I was watching one man. He was preaching and was sweating. So he just cleaned his sweat and said, if you need this handkerchief, come for a thousand Ghana cities. And people ran out. He will give you. You give him the money. He will clean again. Give to another person. Bring him money. That was what he was doing. He sweat. 
hepatitis B. Yeah, that hepatitis B. You are, you are buying hepatitis B for 1,000 Ghana cities. When you talk, they'll say you are blind. So do you think that God is so stupid to sell the anointing at that time for only 1,000 Ghana cities? If God is a businessman, do you think he'll do business with you? Because you don't have money. He'll go and look for Billy Gates and do business with him. He don't need your money now. How much do you have that he needs? He said the gold and the silver. He said in the book of Psalms, if I were hungry, I would have told you. The animals on the hilltop, the kettles on the mountains, they are all mine. You are caretakers. We have to expose some dirty things in the prophetic office so that we can restrict the thing. Prophets have become rich, and they will now intimidate the rest of us like we are never called. You can't sell anointing oil and become rich and say the, the blessings of God make it rich. You are a thief. You know, when they say that, we, it's like you those who are not making headway, it's like you are not annoying you begin to question God. Ah, this guy is in Lancrosa again. Ah, please don't be don't be intimidated. And I realize that those who does that, they are the type of people that people are looking for. They don't want the truth. Someone's like this, they get angry. They think you have backslidden. Mensa Otterbell, Young Cho. All these people don't hear God like the way we claim we are hearing God. Yet they are doing well in ministry. So have you ever asked yourself how? They hear his voices through the promptings. Get used to it. Train your spirit to get used to it. Don't be interested in an audible voice. If it comes, fine. If it does not come, fine. Don't say, and to God speak audibly, I will not hear. You are so concerned about visions. You have climbed mountains about visions. You want God to use you. You have gathered, you carry much. You have climbed mountains. You are lying with snakes. I understand. I was once there. I have slept in caves. Caves. And we have slept in caves and named those caves after our names. Whenever you go there, you may think that you are having an encounter until you read the scriptures and you discover that the place of a better encounter is not the environment. You need to create that atmosphere. Do you know that you can build an altar in your room, your bedroom? You can build an altar where God will decide to do business with you at night. It's an altar. It's not about a mountain, no. Mountains are just mountains. You can create a portal in your room and you begin to see here and, and see promptings from God. You have created the portal through prayer, through other investments, through other spiritual investment, sacrifices, through other spiritual investment, encounters. It's not just about climbing there. But you know, the prophet, the first prophet who started hearing, maybe told that this generation that the only way to hear him is to go to the mountain. So you see them with their mat on top of the mountain. And when they are at the mountain, they will snap a picture and post it. And said, I, as I was on top of the mountain praying for you, the Lord told me, no, that being on top of that, the mountain does not validate your access to the voice of God. Those revelations is what you should be looking for. Because there are those revelations that help us to access some spiritual possibilities in the realm of the spirit. You begin to hear God. You begin to have access to him. He begins to warn you about impending danger. He begins to warn you about impending danger on your contract, on your ministry, on your business, on your relationship, on your marriages. You step out of some relationship that men are thinking that all was well. All of a sudden you stop. A contract people think is bright. All of a sudden you terminate it. They say, why did you terminate the contract? No, it is what the Holy Ghost told you about that contract. Maybe it may lead you to death and you don't want to die. You just stop. Holy Ghost says, stop. You stop. Move. You move. They are promptings. And sometimes those promptings, they can be like feelings. And usual feelings. Feelings that you cannot suppress. We call them promptings. So sometimes when you are not feeling happy, don't just go and sleep. It's a prompting of the Holy Ghost. You have to pray. If you are over happy, it can be promptings. Depressed is a prompting. They are all promptings. You need to be aware of them in the realm of the spirit so that you can take advantages of them and then begin to access the voice of God. Have you ever made Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life? If not, pray this prayer and start a new life in Christ. Dear God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I admit that I am not right with you, and I want to be right with you. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. The Bible says if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I will be saved. I believe with my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now that you are born again, you can worship with any Stars of Heaven church close to you or any Bible-believing church. Locate Stars of Heaven Ministries in Bolgatanga on top of the Ghana News Agency building. Sundays, first service, from 7.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. Second service, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And evening services from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. 
midweek services on Wednesdays from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Tuesdays for counseling from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. For more inquiries, contact the numbers on your screen. Thank you.